Here is another Vinyl Finds video. I haven't done one in a bunch of weeks. I've had to spend the last two weeks in Milwaukee doing a political convention. I do broadcasting, so they made me go. It was a really interesting experience. There was only one record store I had my eyes set on, but I could only get there for one hour on one of the day. Here are the finds from that one hour. Before I went to Milwaukee, I asked Alex at Record Safari, which record store should I go if he knew of any? And he said, go to Acme Records. It has what I'm looking for. So that is exactly what I did. I went on Instagram and I looked and they were only open from noon to five on a Saturday and noon to seven on a Sunday and closed during the week, during the two weeks I was there. So very limited access, but I got there an hour before it closed on the Saturday and I didn't pick anything up super rare, some blind buys, some interesting psych reissues, but it, it was a good haul and here are those records. Mr. Flood's Party from 1969, US. I've never even heard of this record, but I bought it based off the cover and then the label, Cotillion, which is Velvet Underground and other interesting bands. So blind buy, it was cheap. And I know it's psych with flute and some guitar. The Posies, Failure. This came out in 1989, but the cassette, the original release was 1988 in Seattle. They're a lo-fi, alt Seattle. They're not grunge, but they've been around in the grunge scene for a very long time. This is their first album on Blue Vinyl, which I do not have. When they released Frosting on a Beater, 19 on the beater, 1993, they had a record release party at Tower Records. I went there with my friend Al in Seattle and I brought my hi camera and I recorded that. I can't find that, but I've always liked the posies. So I'm glad to pick this one up. It's up, it's on Pop Lama. The Open Mind. This is their one and only album from 1969. This is a reissue. It's been on my list. They had one hit, Magic Potion, which isn't on this album, but this release came with the single, Magic Potion on side two. It also came with a poster and a booklet, The Open Mind. This came out in 1969. The original release is highly collectible. It's a grail, cool cover. This album is known for heavy guitar and trippy lyrics. The Open Mind, I really want an OG. 1968 UK, Spooky Tooth, it's all about. This is British Psych Blues Rock. It's got Mike Harrison, Gary Wright. I had thought the guy from Forum was on this. This is a second pressing UK. I don't have the first pressing. In fact, I don't have any of these, so I'm glad I picked it up. The Bob Seger System. This is on Capital Stereo. This is the second album of three Bob Seger System albums. Bob has gone on record saying he does not like this album. The song Noah is probably the standout track from this album. This is the second album, and I have the third album coming up. I picked it up at another record shop. But Noah, the Bob Seger System. Alexander Spence, or... This is his 1969 solo album. This is the 2000 Sundays piece. This would be psychedelic folk rock. It's on a lot of people's list. Alexander Spence was a founding member of Jefferson Airplane and Moby Grape, and he was in Quicksilver Messenger Service for a very short period. He played drums, San Francisco musician, much like Sid Barrett in England. He was smart bright light, but it fizzled out too quick. When he was in Moby Grape, he was unstable. They eventually got an intervention. I'm not really sure. He went into a in mental institution. He wrote all these songs. When he got out, the first thing he did was go to Nashville. He played all the instruments. He sang all these, and it's a great album. Pick this up if you do not have this album. Gary Higgins, Red Hash. 
1973, hippie folk psych. This is a reissue, 2021 reissue of the 1973 album. It's kind of like Nick Drake, Sid Barrett, Darren Dalton, Judy Sill, and Towns Van Sant, singer-songwriter. He went to jail for a while on marijuana possession. This album was recorded with his friends before he went to jail. It was rediscovered in the 2000s and got reissued, and that actually got him some money. Gospel Oak, Total Blind Buy, sample copy. I don't know anything about it, but it does look like it's something I'm interested in. Probably rock and blues, Gospel Oak. The Rainy Days, that Acapulco Gold, another blind buy. It's like The Seeds, Electric Prunes, The Count Five, Garage, Psych. Another blind buy. It was seven bucks, so I thought I would pick it up. It's another one on the uni label. The third Bob Seger system, Mongrel. This came out in 1970. Another disappointment with Bob Seger. He doesn't like it. I don't think they've reissued these, but I really like them. It's rock, blues. There's a little bit of psych elements. The CA Quintet, Trip Through Hell. This is a really rare 1969 Holy Grail for lots of people. This is the 1996 Sunday reissued. I have a recent reissue. This is the liner notes on this. I have a recent reissue, but the original is worth thousands of dollars. Really heavy, deep psych. I really like this a lot. This is my second reissue I have of it, but this is the Sunday reissue. It's got one album's red, the other album is blue. I don't know what are on the extra tracks. The first album is the album, and the second album is previously unissued. Some demos, some alternate versions. Really happy to pick this one up. If you could find the original, hit me up. I'm looking. Bo Grumpus Before the War. I've heard the name Bo Grumpus, but I don't know the music. The cover is kind of right up there, what I look for, but maybe a little more pop psych. I like hard, heavy psych. Not so much pop psych, even though Gandalf is pop psych, and I really love that. But Bo Grumpus on Atco, 1970. Freedom, their self title. I don't have any freedom. This is the US on ABC. I know a few members are from Proko Harum. I don't have any freedom, and I, that's why I picked it up. Pretty much a blind buy, but I knew the Proko Harum connection, but I don't know who from Proko Harum. 1969, The Glass Harp, self-titled. This is psych, pop, guitar-driven. I've heard the name Glass Harp, but I don't know anything about the music. I do like the cover. MCA. Hamilton Streetcar, the self-titled from 1969. Another psych pop that I've heard of, but I don't know anything about, but I know they're from Los Angeles. I know the name has something to do with what in Toronto, but they're a Los Angeles band. And again, on dot, but I don't know anything about them. Another blind buy. Those were my finds at Acme Records. If I ever come back to Milwaukee, I will stop by again. A lot of cheap, interesting records and the reissues. When the Republican National Convention was over. The next day, we all had our flights back to LA and they were all canceled. Some computer glitch messed up everyone's flights. So my wife came, joined me the Tuesday before. So we jumped on a train to Montana and Whitefish, Montana was the closest place I could go to rent a car. So we took a train to Montana and we rented a car in Whitefish. I went to the first record store I could find in Whitefish slow burn records. They didn't really have anything I wanted, but it was set up really nice. They had turntables, needles. They had lots of new albums for young people, and they had some for older people, but no real psych. He did have a big Japanese selection. I was surprised. There was an MC5 Japanese first album that I would have liked to have gotten, but I didn't buy it. So after we left there, we went to a Goodwill. I never go to Goodwill. Goodwill in Los Angeles is awful, but I wanted to go see some more records. And I ended up coming across, this was the top of a pile, Led Zeppelin II, which I always seem to go and look for Led Zeppelin II and see if they have the RL. And we got, well, they probably can't make it out, but really scratchy. 
nothing deep, but there is an RL on both sides of this record. If I look at this, yeah, I couldn't play it, so I have no idea if it, but there's no deep scratches. The cover has seen better days, split seam there, but it's my first RL out in the wild. There's $18. I have the white label promo, and I also have a VG plus VG plus of this album, but I'm not going to pass up an RL. So I'll probably be gifting this to a friend or someone in a trade soon. Hopefully it doesn't skip. After we left Montana, I rented a car and we went to Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, and then Spokane, and then Ellensburg. And now we are in Seattle, Washington, where I'm going to be doing some digging tomorrow. I'll make a video about those record stores sometime next week. But in the meantime, like and subscribe. Watch any of the other videos I have. Hopefully by next Friday, I'll have the vinyl finds for this weekend. Thank you.